hydrogen trucking is starting to become a mainstream reality. Nikola Motors having deployed some of the very first fuel cell electric trucks in North America is facing some of the very real challenges faced by hydrogen's expensive nature. Transitioning to a new technology is never easy and it's never meant to be easy, but certain OEMs are trying harder than others when it comes to pivoting to this rapidly evolving industry. And that entirely begins by first understanding the refueling and infrastructure operations for hydrogen. Nikola Motors' hydrogen truck has been in production for just over 10 months now. And since the company has delivered around 75 of these to customers and an order bank from dealers that is starting to slowly but surely grow. And as the company recently revealed in its ACT conference presentation, Nikola completed around 1,600 hydrogen fill-ups at three different mobile refuelers in Arizona, Ontario, California, and Long Beach. This amounts to around 60.5 tons of hydrogen having dispensed with an average time of 22 minutes per fill. These numbers are obviously meaningless to anybody who has no context around them, so let's put these numbers into that context first. First things first, as we all know, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes to fill up a diesel semi-truck in the modern era. Modern dispensers for gasoline, diesel, and even ethanol are really advanced, and essentially they're pumping a liquid fluid, which isn't that complicated when compared to DAC tackling a hydrogen molecule. The average fill time for these hydrogen trucks is indeed slightly longer than that of a diesel, and this can be attributed to two key factors. The first key one being the fact that in hydrogen, it's all about pressure and not about speed. The pressure difference between the tanks on board the truck and that from the dispenser is what's going to determine the rate of flow of hydrogen and how long it's going to take to fill the tanks. And because higher pressure systems are always more costly, it doesn't necessarily make sense for that station to use an extremely high, maybe 10,000 PSI system to maximize the refueling time for this truck. You really need economies of scale to play into that, and if you had a lot more trucks on the road, it'd make more sense to beef up the dispensing system. It's kind of like comparing a fast V2 charger from Tesla Supercharger Network and charging your vehicle at home on a level 1 AC charger. It's cheaper to charge it at home, but obviously slower. But it's not like you can install a supercharger at home cost-effectively anyways. Or at least it doesn't make sense to do so. And the second key reason for why the average fueling time is a little longer here is because of the temperature difference between the truck as well as the refueler. The faster you refuel, the more chances you have of ice forming on the nozzle and the metal part surrounding the hub, which can cause discomfort and potentially a situation where the handle gets stuck onto the truck, which you don't want. And although heaters can be implemented within these nozzles to reduce that, right now obviously the technology isn't there. And so companies like Nikola would rather just eliminate that risk altogether and refuel at just a slightly lower PSI instead. Moving aside from just fueling, we also learned that these hydrogen trucks are performing much better in mileage and fuel economy than expected. Nikola's tray fuel cell is averaging around 8.13 miles per kilogram on demonstration runs with some of the demo customers so far, which is better than the 7.1 miles per kilogram that was expected from the company. For those curious, the Nikola tray has around 70 kilograms worth of onboard hydrogen with five tanks, good for around 500 miles of usable range. To put things into perspective, your average diesel semi-truck averages 6.3 miles per gallon, Meanwhile, in the same units, the hydrogen truck averages around 9.1 miles per gallon, which is a significant almost 33% improvement. What's more is that people who drive these trucks 
enjoy them much more than driving a diesel semi truck, which should be absolutely not of a surprise. Not only are these trucks making no vibration, no noise, and have a lot more of an efficient powertrain, but regenerative braking allows you to use the brakes a lot less and reduces your worry about having a runaway truck when going downhill. This single feature of having an electric powertrain dismisses all the benefits you could potentially have from a diesel semi-truck. Yes, the cost is high right now, but that isn't guaranteed with scale over the next decade. Although at certain stations in Southern California, the average cost of hydrogen skyrocketed to around $32 a kilogram, the average cost across the entire state is still around $13 a kilogram. If you pull into an Oakland, California station, you can go for first element fuel or even true zero hydrogen and get a rate of anywhere from $10 to $13 a kilogram, which is still just slightly more expensive than diesel. California already has some of the worst gas prices in the country because of its aggressive legislation against refining and producing CO2 emissions. And even if you were to use clean hydrogen from blue hydrogen resources, because of the natural gas used, California is still going to skyrocket the cost of that kind of hydrogen on a retail level because of these stringent policies. And this is exactly why the current and average cost figures you see in California is no way a good representation of what you will experience in the real world as a truck driver over the next 5 to 10 years. A kilogram of hydrogen holds a similar amount of energy as a gallon of diesel, and although it is much more expensive than refueling or recharging a battery electric vehicle, obviously the costs associated with weight and recharging infrastructure really do weigh the former option down, which is exactly why hydrogen EVs are also on the road and gaining some traction. But as usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on Nikola's hydrogen track record so far and whether or not you think this is something that's going to catch on sooner rather than later. Thanks a lot for watching, folks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.